Good morning, everyone. So before I talk about quantum computing, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about classical computing, the kind of computing we all enjoy today. So if you go back to 1985, there was a company called Cray Computer that came out with the Cray 2 supercomputer. And that at the time was the world's fastest computer. It cost $32 million, and it was a marvel of engineering. Today, we carry around computers that are roughly the same power as that Cray 2 supercomputer. Every one of us has a Cray in our pocket. Today, the largest supercomputer in the world is about 100 million times faster than that Cray computer that came out in 1985. And it costs about $200 million. The world has done such amazing things with computing power, but yet we have all sorts of problems that we can't solve with computers that affect humankind. From modeling the simplest proteins and understanding how they actually work, to understanding how the simplest molecules work, to trying to figure out how to build a model for climate and how climate actually works. All of these are really beyond the capability of even the largest supercomputers that we have. The Summit supercomputer in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee is that world's largest supercomputer right to as of today. And there are lots of these human scale problems that are beyond that capability. So quantum computing will help address that. But there are a number of problems in, in the computing field in general. And the first of which is the problems that we face as, as humans are growing in complexity. They have many more variables and many interactions between those variables. And those are hard problems for classical computers to solve. The interactions between those variables make it very complex for those supercomputers. The second problem is that we're beginning to run out of power in these large computers. You've all heard of Moore's Law, and it's arguable whether we're at the end of Moore's Law, but it's becoming harder and harder to keep up with that curve that we've enjoyed of capacity increasing that I talked about earlier from 1948 roughly till today. That's, that's become a real challenge. And then the third problem is that the dirty little secret of the computational world that we live in, or the dirty little secret of the internet, is how much power is consumed by the computers that we use today indirectly when we attach to our networks. And these data centers, they're being located near hydroelectric plants so that they can be powered adequately. A shocking study is from the Semiconductor Industry Association that says if we continue on this path, Computers are going to consume all of the power that the Earth generates. Now, that can't happen. There, there's got to be another solution for that. So these three components, problems, I think add up to a, a story where alternate approaches need to be taken into the future. So many of you have probably heard about quantum computing. And I'm going to try to give you a brief explanation of what that is today. Um, here's a study, uh, a, a research report from Morgan Stanley and they call it uh, an important technology for the continuation of the global economy. And I agree with that. It'll become an extremely important computational capability to allow us to continue to enjoy the kind of, uh, of progress that we've enjoyed because of the march of computing over time since 1948. It's going to be a big market. It's going to be a very impactful technology and, and one that governments and, and, and obviously companies and NGOs should be familiar with. So I represent D-Wave Systems. We're a small company located in Vancouver, Canada. Our mission is to unlock the power of quantum computing to the world by delivering customer value through practical applications. Now, I know that sounds pretty simple, um, because at the end of the day, what's important about a computer is the kinds of applications that you can run on that computer. And quantum computing is, is, is quite interesting because it's actually, the reason we use the word unlock is we're basically just leveraging nature. Quantum computing is just more effectively using nature. You all probably know that quantum mechanics is the fundamental laws of the universe. 
They were discovered in the early 20th century by these great leading physicists. It really changed our notion of how nature works. So quantum computer is a computer which can directly leverage those quantum mechanical properties and do a calculation effectively the way nature does. The challenge is it's difficult to build such machines. Now let's reflect a little bit about some of the in industry transformations that we've seen over time. <clears throat> and, and if you go back to the 80s and 90s, we really started out building the, the, the plumbing for the internet in this amazing ubiquitous network, wired and wireless, that we all enjoy today. That goes back to, to great companies like Cisco that really started building that kind of infrastructure. And then we saw all kinds of disruptive business models that were built upon that technology. Amazon being a great example of what they've been able to do to transform commerce in, in, a, in a, a way that none of us could have, could have seen happening. Then you, you fast forward to now, IT resources like computers, like storage, are delivered through um, cloud services like AWS. And that's, it's, it's really the way that most of us are now consuming IT resources. And a wave, that we've, uh, a wave of innovation that we're talking a lot about here at this conference is AI uh, and the transformation that AI is making to, to, to the world of technology uh, and the impact that it has on all of our lives, I believe, in a very positive way. And we'll see more and more from AI. I think quantum computing builds upon these innovations that we've had in history. And it will actually be very complementary, particularly with AI. I believe our, our scientists, one of the things that we're excited about in the area of AI is building more transparency into models that are created through AI learning and being able to train with less data and, and noisier data. Uh, one of the challenges that, that companies have today is they don't have access to all of the data sets that giants like Google and Amazon have today. So th those will be important innovations and, and uh, additions in the world of AI that we hope to be part of. But at the end of the day, the most important thing about the quantum computer is what you can do with it. And we've been engaging with our customers for about almost 10 years now, people that have bought quantum computers from us and are accessing our quantum computers. And we have a whole range of early applications. These are all applications that have run on our machine that we've done in partnership with our customers. And they fall into these different categories. Um, and the first category is optimization. And I'll go through an example of that with Volkswagen, who's one of our, one of our customers. Optimizing a whole complex set of variables and trying to come up with the best answer. The other area is in machine learning. I'll talk a, a little bit about that. But cybersecurity and fault detection is a, a, another area that's very important that we've seen a lot of applications for. And then in the area of material simulation, <clears throat> excuse me, and material simulation was the, 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 the father of quantum computing, was, was a guy named Richard Feynman, who conjectured that if you could build a quantum computer, it would have unprecedented performance, particularly in this area of material simulation. And that's very important for the future of us building more efficient batteries or, or things like you know, lighter metals or, or things that, that could, can really help uh, humankind into the future. So let me drill down into one of these applications. So we uh, entered into an arrangement about two years ago with Volkswagen. And Martin Hoffman, who's the CIO of Volkswagen, is truly a, a quantum pioneer. He recognized that he wanted to get his folks experienced with this kind of technology and trying to understand how they could use it in their businesses. So they did um, a couple of projects with us, and the first was to optimize taxi cab routes. And you, you think that's, you know, it sounds like kind of a boring application, but I think it's actually very, very clever. What they did is take not just the individual route of a taxi and optimizing that like we do with our GPS or Waze or any of the applications that we have today, but optimizing it together with all the taxi cabs in, in Beijing. So in other words, have some go one direction, have some go the other direction. So the net is the, the consumer, the person who's riding in the taxi cab gets a better ride overall. When you think about that, you have to sort of optimize and provide directions for the totality of all those taxi cabs. It's an interesting optimization problem and a very complex one. 
So Volkswagen told us a few months ago that they're going to uh, introduce a, a beta test of this uh, into Lisbon next year uh, and actually have it on an iPhone app where the back end of it will be fueled by a quantum computer and it will be providing the, that optimization capability and actually in production in a, in, a, in a limited pilot. I believe it's in Lisbon that they're going to be doing that. So very interesting um, uh, application on behalf of Volkswagen. The other thing they've looked at is um, how can they use the material science aspect of, of what you can do with this computer to improve uh, batteries uh, and, and develop new types of uh, batteries. So uh, this, this, I think Volkswagen is a very forward-looking organization and um, I, I, I really think this is pretty exciting what they've been able to do. Earlier this year, our scientists published papers in both Science and Nature, which, you, as you know, is the most prestigious uh, scientific journals in the world, that, that demonstrated uh, two really interesting applications in materials science. Uh, the first of which is uh, based on uh, work that was done in exotic materials and phase transitions uh, by Nobel Prize winning physicists um, that won the Nobel Prize in 2016. Uh, and uh, he basically said that this work would otherwise be effectively impossible. Um, so we actually simulated the theory that he had developed uh, and won the Nobel Prize for with this. The second paper described um, uh, another application of material science where the, the chief scientist at Lockheed said that this was the first demonstration of a truly useful application on a quantum computer. So we're at this uh, moment in history where I think you're starting to see that quantum computers are about to break through this barrier where they can actually provide capability that's beyond the best of what you can do classically. Regardless of how clever your algorithms or how powerful your supercomputer is in the classical world, we're at that cusp. It's, it's, right hap it's happening right now. And we believe that within the next two years, you'll see applications where you are definitively outperforming what you could do classically. And that's a very exciting uh, time, I think. So let me explain a little bit about what we do at D-Wave. There's different ways to build quantum computers. The type of quantum computer that we build is called a quantum annealer. And our team, we're about 20 years old. Our founding team uh, took time uh, about five years to really work with universities around the world to discover what they thought was the, the, the best way to get to a product which could deliver value to customers as soon as possible. Sounds very basic, but it led us down a path that's different than what many of our competitors are trying to do. We chose this quantum annealing because effectively it's simpler to implement. But having said that, it's taken us 20 years to implement it, so no quantum computer is easy to build. The rest of the world seems to be focusing on something called gate model quantum computing, which is a very logical approach. It's, very, uh, it's, it's backed up by lots of theory and lots of work that's been done in the scientific community, but it's incredibly hard to implement. And estimates are that it will take over 10 years for those type of computers, those gate model quantum computers, to even run the applications that I talked about earlier. So I think it puts us, even as a small company, in an interesting position where we're competing very effectively and maybe a decade ahead of folks like Google, IBM, um, and, and others that are building uh, quantum computers uh, and have uh, leading efforts today. The, the quantum computer itself is really just a chip. It's a special kind of chip. It's a superconducting chip. It runs at very low temperature. And one of the exciting things, you see it up there in the picture, one of the exciting things about that is it dissipates almost no energy. So contrast that to the computers that we have today that use an incredible amount of energy. So this could be, as this computational capability grows, it will allow for a, a huge energy savings and to get us out of that situation where we might run out of energy just powering the computers by 2040. To, to think about how this computer works at a high level, it solves these hard problems that are called optimization problems. It's sort of like the machine language of the computer that we've developed. So at the very low level, you could, you could think of it as you're trying to find, this is a metaphor, but it actually describes pretty accurately what we're doing. Um, the lowest valley in this landscape, in this three-dimensional landscape, 
And, and if you think about that, if you're doing that classically, you kind of have to traverse all of the landscape to be sure that you found that lowest valley. Now, in, in, in actuality, this could be uh, many more dimensions, 10 dimensions, hundreds of dimensions, and these, these express very complex problems. A quantum computer allows you to take, care, take advantage of a, a quantum mechanical property called quantum tunneling, which allows you to get a boost on getting to that lowest value, that best answer. And this is very important for many, many computational problems. So why is there excitement about quantum computing and why are we excited about quantum computing now? Well, I think one of the things is that it's now accessible, it's real. You can, you can connect to quantum computers. So IBM and ourselves and a number of other companies have cloud offerings where you can connect to these quantum computers. And if you're a developer or you know a developer, they could try to use these capabilities and see how they will impact their businesses and their problems that they're trying to solve. Um, we're actually pretty excited that these other folks have their computers online because then customers can look at what they could do on our computer and then they can look at what they could do at IBM and other, other vendors' computers and make a fair comparison of, of what the capability is. So that access through the cloud is very important. And into the future, this is our fourth generation of quantum computer. We've been doing this now, as I said, for almost uh, 10 years. I mean, shipping computers to customers for 10 years. Uh, and with each generation, we dramatically increase the performance of the computer. So you'll see more connectivity between the qubits, more qubits so you can solve larger problems, and then lots more tools to make uh, the, the quantum computer easier to use for developers that don't necessarily understand quantum mechanics or, or how to do uh, you know, these, or quantum information theory or the, you know, the exotic physics behind quantum computer. We want this to be a capability that's usable by developers and researchers around the world. We're very proud of the customers that we've had. Um, one, one I'll mention here, Los Alamos National Labs in the States. These are the folks that invented computers uh, effectively back in 1948. We've had a great collaboration with NASA and Google uh, and USRA. And we've actually been able to install these systems at those, in those customer data centers in addition to providing that access through the cloud. So back to our mission. It really is to unlock this power of quantum computing to provide the capability to, to humankind, to allow people to develop applications and continue on this road of ever improving computational capability. We believe that it's very complementary with classical computing. We don't see that quantum computing is gonna replace the world of classical computing, but it's going to become a very important computational mechanism, particularly for these hard uh, and human scale problems. We think D-Wave is uniquely um, uh, positioned to provide this capability to the world. We've, we, we have um, been in the business the longest, uh, and we have that capability that, that, that is far beyond what you can get with uh, the gate model quantum computers in, in the competition. So I think part of this, if you, if you follow Gartner, who's one of the industry analysts, uh, we talked to them just recently, and they uh, raised their forecast on, on um, now saying that by 2023, they believe that 20% of the enterprises are going to start allocating budget for quantum computing and putting it into their workflows uh, and into their businesses. Uh, this is, this is uh, accelerated from what they were thinking just a couple of years ago. So it's a technology that's very important uh, we think that governments and, and enterprises um, should be interested in it. We think there's a huge uh, ability to create ecosystems. Uh, we actually have one partner of ours here today called One Qubit, who is a company that was founded in Vancouver. Uh, we are very close partners. They are developing software for, for quantum computing. We'd like to see that all around the world and the creation of these ecosystems and, and software capability within all of the disciplines where quantum computing uh, could become useful. So thank you. I know that was a lot to talk about in 20 minutes, but I hope it gave you a flavor of, of quantum computing. Uh, and uh, of course, we'd love to talk to you, uh, any of you more about it as, as, as the day goes on. Thank you all.